Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to talk about the two useful ways in which we can look at samples. We call them useful distributions. Now again, the reason why we take samples is because typically populations are very large and we can represent a population by taking a small sample out of the huge population. Now, the sample can represent the population if the sample size is large enough. So the sample size, which is represented by n, must be large enough to represent a population. What we could also do is take many samples that are smaller, and then we're going to show the distribution, well, two of those distributions of those samples. One distribution is the sample means. The other distribution is the sample ranges. So each of the samples will have its own mean, its own average. And then what we do is we then graph all those averages. Some will have a small average, some will have a large average. The majority will have somewhere in between. And you can see that the distribution of the means of the sample, the averages of the sample, becomes a normal distribution as well. So that's one way in which we can find a representative average or representative means of all the samples which then closely correlates to the sample or to the population mean and we'll show you later how to do that. So we can say here that the sample distribution of the sample means, now I don't like that we put in the word sample there, I'd rather read the distribution of the sample means, it reads easier, but they typically write it as the sample distribution of the sample means tends to be a normal distribution. Again, if we have enough samples, and they don't have to be large, they can be smaller, but if we take enough samples, we then have a nice distribution, and the mean of that distribution will closely represent the mean of the population. Secondly, we can also take the ranges in each of these samples. For example, let's say we have a sample size of two, and here we have seven and three, the range of that will be four. So if we take multiple samples of a large population, and we measure the range in each of those samples, and then we do a distribution of those ranges, we then have what we call the sample distribution of the sample ranges, or we can read simply the distribution of the sample ranges, but that tends to be skewed to the right. In other words, the larger numbers will tend to, the larger occurrences, I should say, tend to be smaller, and the small, small number of occurrences tend to be large. In other words, on, typically when we do a distribution of sample ranges, then we find that the smaller range occurs more often than the larger range. But that, of course, depends again on the sample size. If the sample size is large, that won't be so much the case. It'll again become more of a normal distribution. If the sample size is small, then we tend to lean towards having a greater occurrence at the smaller ranges. And we'll show you some examples of that later as well. But at least that gives you a good introduction as to why we take samples, why we take multiple samples, and then we draw distributions of those multiple samples. The two distributions will be the, the sample means and the sample ranges. The sample means is the most important one of those two distributions. We do use the ranges, but we primarily use the sample means and we'll concentrate this, these lectures, these videos, on talking about the sample means, the distribution of those sample means, and what they represent and how we can use those to represent the information of the entire population. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.